Hi, everyone, um, and welcome to our panel. Um, let's get started. So hi, everyone. My name is Lindsay Kay, and I am the Director of Operational Outcomes in Insect Group Your Recorded Future. So today I'll be moderating a panel of Insect Group analysts from our different teams whose specialties span the technical, geopolitical, industry, and trends tracking areas within the team. Our panelists will be discussing their research and highlight examples of their skill set that aided in that research, what it took to gain those skills, and successful collaborations. So good morning, panelists. Um, I was hoping you could each give an introduction and speak to your background and what you do at Recorded Future. So I guess, Rachel, please start. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rachel Mansfield, and I'm a threat intelligence analyst at Recorded Future. I specifically specialize in nation state activity, hacktivism, and also tracking uh, geo geopolitics in the Middle East. Um, prior to my time at Recorded Future, I was an analyst um, within the IC. Uh, how about Leah? Hey everyone, my name is Leah Kier. Um, I am also an insect analyst at Recorded Future. Um, I specialize in trends tracking, um, just general trends tracking, um, and I also focus on malware and ransomware um, research. I have a background in financial intelligence, um, so I worked at a financial institution for three years prior to Recorded Future, um, and I am located in Boston. Thank you, Leah, and Sherry. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sherry Huang, and I am also a cyber threat intelligence analyst on the strategic and persistent threats team, the same team as Rachel. Um, and our team focuses on nation state and geopolitical cyber activity. Um, so my area is cyber threats in East Asia, especially with a focus on China. Okay, thank and, you. Oh, sorry. Yep, sorry. Um, like I was, like I have a pretty non-traditional cyber background um, and like for the audience out there, especially if you're students, um, like one thing I like to point out is um, sometimes your journey into cybersecurity is non-linear. So for example, like I was an international business major um, and then I started my career launching like two startups, which both failed and ended up working for Google in Hong Kong and Sydney um, doing digital advertising, um, which is very different from cybersecurity. Um, but then I eventually decided to pivot into cybersecurity. Um, so I went to grad school for international relations and that's how I got my foot in the door. Um, so like, I guess today we'll be talking about a lot of like what brought us here and how that links to what we're going to be doing um, and I hope that would be interesting and insightful for you all. So thank you, Sherry. I'm so glad that you highlighted kind of the different paths to kind of where you are right now and kind of like some of the different skill sets that you picked up along the way. So I mean, each of you really has identified different skill sets that you bring as part of your role on Insect Group. Um, doing threat intelligence work. So can you talk a little bit about what your specialty is and what the different aspects of cybersecurity that your skills help you excel at at Report of Future? Sure, yeah, I can get started. Um, so like I said, I do general um, trends tracking and I do a lot of uh, reoccurring type reports. So I kind of send out um, like weekly and monthly and quarterly trends um, to our clients. And so one thing that I uh, love about working with people at Recorded Future is that um, our in-sit group has a range of people with a number of different talents. Like just looking at the four of us here, um, we have skills in a number of different things. Um, and across Insect, we have people who are uh, really skilled in the dark web, um, in uh, like native foreign language speaking, um, and also with uh, geopoll and malware analysis. And so obviously it's impossible for one person to be an expert at all of those things. Um, and that's what's so awesome about our team is that we are able to work with people from other teams. So when I'm doing research and I'm coming across things that are happening on the dark web, I'm able to pull in um, experts who are able to actually help me understand understand what's happening and um, understand the language that they're using. Um, if they're using slang that I am like, what, it, what does this mean? Um, they're able to step in and kind of help me understand, um, is this a threat? Is this just chatter? Um, and what's really important? 
and, and what's relevant um, and actionable. So that's, I think, what's really, really cool about our field and about our team is that we just, we have such a range of people who are so intelligent and brilliant in their own ways. Um, and we can kind of pull at each person and really work together with each other. So um, that's kind of what I valued from having a diverse set of skill set across our team. Um, it's just been really awesome and an awesome experience for me in my career. Yeah. So thank you, Leah. And I know that um, kind of you have the more trends tracking sort of approach. So I'd love to hear from Sherry, who has a little bit more of the geopolitical bent next. Sure. Um, so the skills I frequently employ in my daily work, I would say mostly are geopolitical analysis and Chinese language skills and sometimes um, con local connections in the region. Um, as we know, a lot of cyber activity, especially by nation states, are motivated by geopolitical events and tensions between different countries. So understanding the historical and even current state of affairs um, within and between countries and also the power players within those countries is um, a really huge advantage to the work that I do. Um, and I think it's a lot easier uh, to be able to co conduct research in the local language, especially when it comes to China, um, because there's so much more material um, that come out so much sooner in the local language. Um, so that would lend depth into uh, the research that we do. Um, and I'd just like to echo Leah's point that um, nobody can be really good or an expert at everything. So I also really value um, that insect group has the different sub teams, each with different specialties and expertise. Um, and I find myself like just jumping on like Slack calls or um, Zoom chats with my colleagues on like Lindsay's team or Leah's team or our dark web team um, to pick their brains and uh, check their hypothesis, like my hypo hypothesis with them, um, and also asking them for like insights. At, into like what they're super good at. And that's also really benefited our work. Awesome, thank you, Sherry. So uh, Rachel, you also kind of have some of the more sort of geopolitical bent and I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on this as well, please. Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, I specialize in nation state activity and also tracking geopol um, in the Middle East. And something that I found that we've done really well is our analysis with the convergence between nation state activities, of, you know, specifically within the Iranian APT sphere and also geopolitics. Um, and to just go into some research that we've done in um, early April, we published a blog um, regarding the military installments and also the intelligence agencies that make up Iran's cyber program. And what we found is that due to a lot of infighting and competition, um, we've seen that this definitely affects the cyber program um, and also their operations, whether that be through the increase of um, rates of the rates of occurrence of leaks or the lowering of intelligence morale. Um, but I find that it's really important to one, understand the technical analysis, but also as Sherry mentioned, um, also understanding the human element, um, understanding the motivations behind these attacks and also understanding the people behind them. Thank you, and I'm so glad that you highlighted um, kind of the people behind them and kind of understanding some of the more geopolitical situation because, you know, we all know that cybersecurity does not happen in a vacuum and there's kind of a lot of things around, like let's say just the malware. So we hear, you know, we all hear news of organizations and individuals being affected by ransomware attacks, or data leaks and scams, but you've all identified that it's clear that what we're seeing is only part of the story. Like there's a certain nuance to all these situations that is highly affected by the geopolitical climate. Um, world events and what's going on in the industry that drives a lot of these attacks. So um, I was hoping that, you know, you guys could talk a little bit about an instance where your research has really benefited from this multidisciplinary um, kind of team approach. So Rachel, you got um, at that, if you'd like to talk a little bit more about that as well. Yeah, sure. Um, so specifically with our research into Iran's cyber program, um, obviously it's not just a one person effort. Um, there are multiple people across our organization that assisted 
with this um, report, whether it be um, through language assistance or also just SMEs that fully understand um, Iran and their APT capabilities. Um, so although we, you know, looked at um, mostly the history and the political structure of Iran cyber program, we also reached out to, you know, um, people across the team. And in addition to this, um, just in my daily work, I track nation state actors. So I'm constantly tracking Middle Eastern APTs. Um, and as I'm not an, an, a malware analyst by trade, um, a lot of the times I come across, you know, different malware, um, different malware hashes that I may not understand, um, but I want to further understand. And I know I can reach out to people um, specifically in my team, but also on Lindsay's team, um, who can, one, help me understand what's going on. They can answer my questions, but they can also provide a different perspective. Um, because as I mentioned um, previously, I specifically come from the IC. So I have, you know, coming into Recorded Future, I have my own um, specific type of methodology uh, to analysis that was kind of installed into me when I was in the IC. and just having different perspectives and different insights um, from people across my team has really enhanced my growth as an analyst. And I think that's something super spectacular about Recorded Future. Awesome, thank you. And I'm so glad that you talked about kind of reaching out to some of the other teams. So Leah, um, coming from the trends tracking perspective, you really get a high level overview of so much that's going on right now. And I was hoping you could talk a little bit about how you've incorporated people from other teams into your research to make it successful. Yeah, absolutely. So um, recently I did a report on um, the top ransomware variants that were um, being discussed in, in 2019. And um, it was pretty interesting because I, while I have like a high level understanding of malware and how it works, I'm nowhere near like a malware expert um, and a ransomware expert. And so I was able to pull in um, help from other teams. Um, we have uh, someone at Recorded Future who's brilliant with ransomware. He follows it really closely and he was able to help me um, do some research and figure out exactly what I was looking for. Um, in other reports too, I look at malware trends um, and I do analysis on that. And a lot of malware trends also have to do with discussions that are occurring over the dark web. So understanding how they're being um, sold, how they're being shared, um, how that code's being shared. Is it a commodity malware? Um, and so I worked really closely with our dark web team um, to understand exactly what's happening so that we can have a full picture um, and have the full context of what's happening because that's so important to cybersecurity is understanding where is this malware coming from? Um, what are the intentions of the threat actor? Um, is it for espionage? Is it to steal data? Um, is it to ruin a company's reputation? Um, and so it's, I, I benefit from working from other teams so much um, because I have experience in trends tracking, but I'm not an expert on um, reverse malware engineering and all of that. And so um, being able to lean on our teammates is huge. Um, and I, I may be a stronger writer than someone who is a really strong malware, like reverse engineer. So in, we might be able to put our forces together and create a really awesome research piece. So um, that's kind of how I've worked together with other teams um, and it's been pretty powerful and I love it, yeah. Awesome, thank you. Um, so you're, you highlighted the kind of like coloring and providing context to kind of some of the work that you're doing by engaging other teams. So Sherry, I know that you've done some Chinese disinformation kind of work. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how you were able to kind of enhance that with maybe some of the other teams as well? That's a really great question. Um, and one different aspect I'd like to bring uh, to the working with not just other teams, but like other experts um, with, for example, different geopolitical or geographical expertise um, is actually what helps bring out some of the insights in our research. For example, um, a lot of my work recently has been on Chinese influence operations 
Um, and like when we read the news, we have been seeing this rhetoric of about how um, the Chinese have become more aggressive and more proactive in their information operations targeting the rest of the world, especially um, since COVID. And um, a lot of uh, news pieces say that the Chinese are adopting a Russian-like approach um, because in the influence operations world, like we see that the Russians were the like pretty pretty much the first ones to be actively targeting um, other countries and also adopting more aggressive uh, tactics. Um, but because like our team um, not only tracks Chinese influence operations, we have different experts. For example, Rachel also looks into um, the Iranian influence operations and we have um, experts that look into Russian uh, and Korean uh, influence operations. So like through our work together and our daily discussions about relevant topics, like we can compare and contrast. So like one insight that I got is that even though the tactics might seem similar, so it might seem that like they're copying each other on the surface level, but um, because of the motivations behind these tactics, like they might have totally different motivations and trying to achieve really different strategic national goals. Um, so what seems true on the surface and is repeated by uh, media might not be true if you really look under the surface. And I don't think I would have gotten as much insight if I didn't have these discussions with my teammates who are looking really deep into influence operations in other regions. Thank you, Sherry. So we actually got a question from the audience. So um, all of you have really highlighted kind of a lot of the cool work that you do and you really established yourself in the cybersecurity industry. So the question that we got was, where's a good place to start for young people to kickstart a career in cybersecurity? To anybody. I can take that one um, or part of it. Um, so I think uh, for me, I, so I, did not go to school. I didn't go to college for cybersecurity. I originally wanted to be a lawyer and then got towards the end of my undergrad and was like, oh, law school is a big commitment. I'm not sure if I'm ready for that yet. So I decided to take some classes for, I decided to get my master's and took some classes um, for cybersecurity and found out I loved it. And I think that that's something that's really important is to try out different things. Um, so try out coding in Python. It might not be for you, but it might be for you and you might really love it. Um, so finding if that's something that you're interested in is a really good way to start. Um, podcasts are awesome. Podcasts, we have a couple of recorded future podcasts. There's also the Cyberwire, which is a really, really great podcast that you can listen to. And it's just really great to kind of understand what's happening in the threat, in the cybersecurity landscape. Um, so just being aware of what's happening and then you hear a word that you're unfamiliar with. So you can go Google it and look it up. Um, YouTube has a lot of resources for trainings. There's also a lot of training websites um, out there that are available. Um, and yeah, I would say just try out as much as you can, um, learn as much as you can, find a mentor. I had a mentor and have a mentor and she's awesome. And I just um, learned from her. Um, and then also internships are huge. If you can get an internship in the field, you can figure out what you like, what you don't like. There are so many different spaces in the cybersecurity world that um, if you're able to get an internship, you'll get a better insight into um, maybe threat intelligence is what you want to do, or you want to work in um, incident response, or you maybe you're better focused for policy writing. Um, so figuring out kind of what is good for you, um, and then just following through with that. Um, and so that kind of was what I did and um, was really, really helpful for me. So... I totally agree with what Leah just said. Um, for myself, I also started with internships because even in grad school, I went, um, I studied international relations, even though my focus was on tech and cyber, um, I didn't really know what that meant until like I started doing different um, 
internships within the cyber industry. So as Leah mentioned, like there's so many aspects and um, facets to the industry and they're like a hundred different roles. So like what role fits your skill set and your interests the most? Um, like nobody will ever know until like we actually start doing it. And a lot of things like, like the internet is really good at helping us um, learn from other people like you can read other people's experience and reviews but I think especially in terms of cybersecurity or like research and analytical work um, there are skills and also challenges that you won't experience until you actually start doing it and it's very different from reading about it so like I would definitely encourage everyone um, it might not have to be like a year or six months. It can be like a one month or three month internship, but like be in the environment and start doing the work. Um, and also like a fun fact, like I actually got um, into Recorded Future uh, because of one of the projects I was doing. It's, it wasn't an internship, but it was um, a final paper for one of the classes that I was taking. And I happen to find recorded future research and then on the website found that hey they're hiring so i was like i'm already doing this they're doing awesome research this seems like a really cool company like i should just apply and that's how i got my job so i think roll up your sleeves and start doing might lead to like different opportunities that you'd like never imagine i'll just quickly add um along the same lines as everyone i did not have a background in cybersecurity. Um, I went into the IC with a bachelor's degree in poli sci and Arabic, um, and I had absolutely zero interest in anything to do with computers when, <laughs> when I was in college. Um, but just being in the work environment I was in, I really developed an interest in cybersecurity. Um, and I took it upon myself to independently go out and um, find different ways to learn more about cybersecurity, whether that be through um, online trainings, um, similar to what Leah said, YouTube has some really great resources, um, but I also was really fortunate to have the opportunity to go to a lot of paid um, trainings as well, which allowed me to understand the basics of cybersecurity. So just like understanding networking or basic just basic security can really help. Um, and it can gauge whether or not you are interested in this field. Um, yeah, and then, you know, once you kind of develop those skills and um, do that work, you can you can do anything. Yeah, and like if oh, sorry, Lindsay. If there's just one thing I can add to you is if you can brush up on your writing skills, that's huge in this field. Um, being able to write well is really, really important. Um, and being able to be have like critical analysis and assessment based writing is awesome. So if you can brush up on that, um, practice writing, even if it's if you're in school and you're writing papers and it doesn't seem that fun, um, find things that you're interested in writing about and just practice writing um, because that's a huge part of the job too. So I love that you all brought up kind of trying different things and sort of figuring out what you like, what you're good at. And I just want to point out so you know, my background was originally, you know, I got a computer engineering degree. I did not do any cyber stuff in college and I started out as a software engineer, but I really loved reverse engineering. And it's important to note that like nobody just kind of, you know, starts looking at malware and is amazing at it. So really focusing on like, do I love this? Like, is this something that I want to keep working on? And just not getting discouraged if, you know, day one, you're not like, suddenly amazing at it. So just kind of figuring out what you love and what you want to devote the time to, I think is super important to highlight. But um, yeah, so I guess sort of on a similar note, would you guys be able to talk a little bit about, you know, what piece of advice would you give yourself when you were first starting out in this industry and when you kind of identify what you liked and what you wanted to further pursue? Sure, um, I can start with that. So, um, I still consider myself pretty new in the industry. Um, and like, so I don't have like really insightful advice to give, but I did get one piece of really awesome advice from um, this really experienced expert in the industry just this week. And I'd love to share it with you. 
Um, so like her advice was to expose yourself to as many experiences as possible. Um, so try everything at least once. Uh, for example, like she really encouraged me to um, try researching a really technical piece of malware or work with someone from Lindsay's team um, and see how they do it. Uh, because like, even though I might not be super great at it, or even if I do it and find that, that like, I, I should just probably keep a distance from analyzing malware, but like, at least I'll know after I experience it once. So like, that's a really good learning that I learned this week. Um, and I hope it's helpful to everyone else. To go off of what Sherry said, um, something that I, I guess like I learned once I entered the IC and I think has been really important um, entering into a new field is that you should never be afraid to ask questions. They like never be afraid to speak up and ask questions. Um, I think when I graduated from college and I entered into the workforce, um, you're, I think for me personally, it can be really intimidating entering into a new place. Um, you're surrounded by a lot of experts and you might feel a little like scared to ask questions or to look incompetent, which was a main concern of mine. Um, but I find that's really important to always ask questions, always be curious, especially in this field where you only further your analysis when you are constantly asking what else, like what else is new? Um, what does this do? You know, um, so I think for me, I would have told myself, like, never be afraid to ask questions. Yeah, um, I think two pieces of advice that aren't necessarily cyber focused, but just um, focused on careers in general. Um, one is to network. Networking is huge. Um, the people you know will uh, support you and help you find the job you want and that you'll love. Um, that's how I found Recorded Future was through a networking, someone I knew through my previous job. Um, and I am so happy that I had that connection because I'm happy where I am now. So networking is huge. If you have any opportunities to network, um, networking events. Um, there's also a ton of groups. I'm part of a couple of women's groups um, in cybersecurity. And so just making connections there is really, really big. Um, and then my other piece of advice is just to speak up for yourself. Um, no one's going to speak up for you except yourself. Um, so if I found that if you're working really, really hard and you think maybe um, I deserve that promotion or um, I, I really want to go for this or I really want to write this report, no one's going to speak up for yourself except for you. Um, so push yourself, um, talk to the people around you um, and really push yourself to your next level um, because no one's going to support you or do that except for yourself. So um, that's something that I've found to be really important uh, and is difficult, um, but I think it's so important to keep in mind. Awesome. Thank you all. So I guess if there are any other questions from the audience, we have a couple of minutes left, but I guess kind of one final question that I had for all of you is where do you kind of see yourself growing next? What do you, what do you want to learn next? Man, that's a good question. Um, for me, it's just improve my skills with malware and Lindsay, I'm going to be bugging you a ton <laughs> on that, but for me, it's just brushing up on that and then also improving my writing skills as much as possible. I, we are a company that, um, does a lot of amazing, amazing research. Um, and so just improving on that kind of stuff is really important for me. So that's kind of my direction of focus, um, and just becoming, the best intelligence analyst I can be. <laughs> yeah, along the lines with uh, Leah, my the thing I'm really trying to go for um, this year, probably next year, is the cert for GREM. Um, so I really do like very focused on trying to be better with malware, um, especially just with the line of work that I'm doing right now. Um, I really just want to understand like what goes in, what goes, what's behind, you know, um, different variants of malware and why do, you know, specific threat actors use 
a specific types of malware. Um, so that's really what I'm trying to go for next. For me, um, it's a bit different. Uh, I think the, a lot of work that we do as analysts is from the bottom up. So often when we think about a cybersecurity problem, we start from um, an IOC, so indicator of compromise. Um, it might be like a malicious IP or a malicious hash. Um, and we start from there and then we start researching and branching out. Um, I think my next step, I would like to learn about cybersecurity problems from the top down. Um, so maybe it's uh, like learning about strategies, strategy setting at the nation state level or it can also be strategy setting at an organization level. So we work with and for a lot of different clients. Um, I'm super interested to learn um, what they do with the intelligence we provide them and how that affects their decision-making within their organization and what kind of actions they take from that. Um, because I think knowing that it will also help me and all of us um, know what's most crucial for them, what pieces of information would really help them address their problem. Um, so my next goal is to learn cybersecurity from the top down. Cool, thank you. So we have one final question. So how about hackathons to engage high school and post-secondary students as a pathway learning activity? I can take this one. Um, I, I noticed there were a couple questions in the chat too. Um, so for me, I uh, a little bit of background, I work with RFWMI, which is a women's mentorship in recorded feature. Um, and so we support women throughout the uh, company and then also um, support our allies um, and everyone who supports women, which is the whole company. But um, anyway, so we do work, um, we've gone into high schools um, and talked to girls about um, the opportunities in cybersecurity because I think that that's so important is to get in at a ground level um, and make students aware that cybersecurity is a career that um, you can go into and you don't need to have these really technical skills. Um, like at, at Recorded Future, we have people who uh, had a different life in their previous career um, and then they moved into a cybersecurity field, into the cybersecurity field, they didn't necessarily think um, that their skills would be able to translate well, but they did. Like for instance, there's someone on our team who is an English teacher and she's come over to be um, part of the team doing cybersecurity. And you wouldn't really necessarily think that that transition would um, work, but it works so well. And she's a huge asset to our team. Um, I mean, we have people in HR and marketing and sales and recruitment that have these skills that are so important um, to cybersecurity and it's just getting those skills in. So I think doing hackathons to engage high school students and post-secondary students is huge. Um, just it's so important to get young people involved in this field. I recently did a hackathon um, for human trafficking and there were a ton of young people on it and they were killing it. They were doing so well. Um, so I think having that, those types of opportunities um, are really awesome. And if you can find them, there's a ton of hackathons, especially right now with everything happening remote. Um, there, a lot of them aren't being canceled. They're being put on virtually, which is a really great opportunity because not only does it open it up, it opens it up to people worldwide. So um, you might not have been able to attend it because you couldn't fly there or you couldn't drive there. But now you can attend a, a hackathon that might be put on, that was supposed to be put on in London, but you can attend it virtually. So look into hackathons. I think that those are a really, really great way to meet people and get experience. Okay, so I think we are about out of time. Um, so thank you all for coming and thank you all for, you know, doing an awesome job talking about your research and your skills and um, I guess how, how to get where you are. So I really appreciate the time and thank you everybody else. Thank, thank you, you everyone. Everyone. Thanks.